Hello, and welcome to this eSchool News webinar, Five Key Ways to Engage Your Students in and Outside of the Classroom with Technology. <coughs> My name is Chris Hobson, and I'll be moderating this event. I am the Custom Content Manager for eSchool News, and I'm excited to have you join us for what should be a very informative session. Today's webinar is sponsored by Sharp. Sharp offers a range of content management and workflow solutions to help educational institutions enhance traditional printing and scanning with emerging technologies. Additionally, Sharp Aquas Board interactive display systems provide advanced features to make lessons more creative and collaborative. Before I introduce our presenter, I'd like to take a minute to go over some features of the platform that we're using for this webinar. Today's event will be recorded, so you don't have to worry about missing a thing. Within a few days, you'll receive an email message that contains a link to the recorded webinar along with the PDF of the slides. You can submit questions at any time during the presentation by clicking on the Q&A box. There will be time at the end of the presentation for a speaker to address questions. Also, there is a group chat function that you can launch by clicking on chat. Feel free to use this feature to chat amongst yourselves or to contact somebody from the eSchool News team if you have a technical question. But please don't use this feature to ask questions of our speaker. If you have a question for the speaker, you can use the Q&A box that I just mentioned. With these housekeeping items out of the way, let's get started with our presentation. The presenter today is Sandra Morello. Senior Sales Engineer for Sharp Information and Imaging Company of America. Sandra has more than 15 years in the technology, integration, and audiovisual industry. She has received numerous awards and accolades for her attention to operational efficiencies and outstanding customer service. At this time, I'm going to turn things over to Sandra to begin the presentation. Thank you so much, Chris, and hello to everyone out there. It's so nice to connect with you today virtually. So what I want to do is just back up for one second, and Chris, you did a great job in introducing who Sharp is, but I also want to call out the fact that we have a 105-year history. That's a, that's a pretty long history. We've been operating in the U.S. since 1962, and we're very proud to say that we are in alliance with Foxconn. So for those of you who may or may not be familiar with Foxconn, Foxconn is the fifth largest manufacturing company worldwide. We truly do pride ourselves on being connected not just with our customers, but our partners, but also listening to the voice of the customer when it comes to developing our technology and our product out there in the field. So your thoughts, your opinions, your feedbacks are very, very important to us. Now what I'm going to do as I take you through this slide deck today is I'm going to focus a little bit on the market because understanding the market and the trends is truly important, right? What is the school district doing next to you? What do the classrooms of the future look like? What is that technology? But then we're going to take that focus and we're going to narrow it down to different applications and even some suggestions of product. Please get those questions ready because I am going to be thrilled to answer those questions at the end of this session. Let's start with learning in the classroom. Probably one of my favorite quotes up here on the screen. If a child can't learn the way we teach, maybe we should teach the way they learn. Interesting, right? Let's think about the way the schools were as we were growing up. Remember the blackboards, sometimes flip charts? Remember all the hardback books being passed around in the classroom and you would write your name on the inside of the book? Well, it's interesting. The ways of learning are completely different these days. Throughout this slide deck, I will also have uh, several statistics as well. That'll be great as you're putting together your budgets and you're saying, hmm, Sandra had some great talking points, but what do those statistics look like? So you will have access to each one of these slides um, as well as those statistics that I think will be very important to each of you. So the new ways to learn, K through 12 students. How about that? Gaming raised the average test score to 95.1 versus 79.1% without gaming. I don't remember using gaming when I was growing up. 82, 82, that's a pretty big number. 
percent of the students surveyed would prefer to use their own mobile devices for enhanced learning. Yep, cell phones weren't around when I was growing up. Seven in 10 students surveyed have used mobile apps to keep their classwork organized. And how about this? Over 70% of districts interviewed have made infrastructure a priority for 2020 classroom technology upgrades. Again, teaching the way they learn. So let's break it down into five categories. And the first one that we'll start with are the student devices. Because that's important, they're using them every single day as they come to class. So what are some things that you need to think about with those devices? There's so many to choose from out there in the industry. You need to start to think about, is there a digital pen that's going to be utilized with that device? Would allow the student to explore utilizing keyboards and mice, or maybe it's going to be a touch screen. How about that word collaboration? And we're seeing more and more students wanting to record within the classroom. So you always want to consider multiple inputs. And the device that you're buying for the students may vary from grade to grade and even the teacher's devices as well. So you want to make sure that you're considering a portfolio if using uh, laptops or um, any type of um, computers whatsoever that allow for different computers for their teachers versus the administrators, the students K through 12. And like I said, you're going to see a little different trends going into higher education. As a matter of fact, in higher ed, you're starting to see more of that BYOD environment. Either way, you want to make sure that you have product that's ultra light, that's powerful and versatile, and most importantly, again, one that's user friendly. A second key area, and this is personally my favorite area to talk about. As a display manufacturer, we do a lot in the classroom with displays, displays of all different types, from touch interactive displays to non-interactive to specialty boards as well. So this is where I'm going to take this next journey in the classroom and collaborating, that technology to engage with your students. So as you look into the future, we're seeing more and more teachers wanting to utilize technology right there in the classroom. Again, it's about relating with the students. We understand that uh, touch screens have become very popular, not just touch screens on the student's devices, but actually going up and interacting with the boards itself. As a matter of fact, many teachers have come out and said uh, when they write papers on interactive displays and how they're connecting with their students, that they feel it's just not enough to give a lecture to the student, but to actually allow the student to go up and participate in part of that lecture, hands on that display. And we're seeing interactive boards, again, not just K through 12, but in higher education as well. The nice thing about interactive boards is teachers can easily explain every part of the lesson by touching, by expanding, even saving the file, sending it out, really creating special effects to capture the audience's attention, like I'm trying to do with you guys today. Capture your attention. We learn through so many visuals, and we grab the subject easily, rather than just looking at a blackboard and listening. Think about yourself, how you have learned, or maybe even take it a step further, maybe as a parent, how you have taught your children, and you carry those lessons into the classroom, teaching them how to look at the visuals, how to put concepts around the visuals, to touch, to feel, to be part of. When considering any type of interactive display, and there's so many great interactive displays out there, but you want to think long term as well. The operating system, perhaps, that we grew up on, right, it's not always the operating system that may be around um, in a couple years, or it may not be the standard that your district decides to standardize on in, say, three years down the road. The software that you're using today may not be the software of tomorrow that you choose to perhaps renew your license on. So you want to make sure that you're looking at an open platform device. And what do I mean by an open platform? Well, there's no embedded operating system. Think of it as it kind of future-proofs your classroom. So how does it future-proof your classroom? Well, 
the board becomes as intelligent or as limited as the device that's actually running the board. So looking at an open platform device will allow for seamless integration. Believe it or not, it will also allow for um, more comfort and ease in using the display because you're actually using the devices that you are used to in your platform and you're just extending it on a very large screen known as a touch screen. You want to certainly leverage your existing classroom infrastructure and software investments. I mean, as much as we would love to have new budgets every year to go out and update our infrastructure and software, how likely is that? So again, by having an open platform device, it allows you to leverage, leverage what's already there in place. Many of you have heard of Blackboard, of Promethean, maybe Active Inspire, Google Classroom and even Classflow. They seem to be the most popular softwares that are out there right now for that classroom environment. Again, utilizing an open platform device ensures that that software will work seamlessly with that interactive screen. You can take collaboration to a whole new level. You can take collaboration and modernize it. So a key product that Sharp does have out there in the industry is uh, we're very proud of and very well known within the education market for our AquaSport interactive displays. Again, I'm not going to go through all the technical specs, but we do carry a range of displays that are interactive from 40 inches all the way up to 85 inches. Believe it or not, from 4K to 8K displays. So it's something that you're going to want to think about how many points of touch, what size display you may be interested in, where you're going to position the display. And again, in some cases, you may have an interactive display in the very front of the classroom, and depending on the size, if you are at a university level, you may have displays located on each side of the lecture hall as well. Then there are specialty displays, Windows collaboration display. One thing that we have learned as a display manufacturer is there's lots of opportunity in higher education. Higher education in preparing the, let's say, the students and the leaders of tomorrow, right, to prepare them for the workforce. So we worked closely with Microsoft and we do now offer a Windows collaboration display, which is a 4K high resolution multi-touch display. What's really great about this is we're seeing more and more universities take an interest again in positioning a device like this because it brings that conference room, that collaboration, that work and feel to the university. And ultimately, those students that will be graduating soon, they are going in the workplace. They're always needing to think about collaboration, working with teams. Uh, you know, how are they creating projects, et cetera. And this is the perfect device for positioning that. It's about taking collaboration to the next level. Again, especially when you're looking at that higher education. There was a great quote from Microsoft, and they came out when they were talking about their Teams platform and said, teamwork is different from collaboration. A lot of people can get together and collaborate on something and get nothing done. But with teamwork, people have a shared purpose, a sense of accountability to make progress together and expectations of real outcomes. Now think about yourselves as professionals, how you're collaborating with each other and perhaps the platforms, uh, different chat platforms that you're utilizing. Maybe many of you are already utilizing something like Microsoft Teams. More and more classrooms, believe it or not, are moving to that type of platform. Again, it's preparing the leaders of the future for when they go into the workplace. And then sometimes you don't need interactive touch. Sometimes you don't need specialty um, displays. Sometimes you're just looking for non-interactive displays, and that's okay too. Those non-interactive displays, uh, perhaps you're connecting with your students by mirroring information from their devices directly to a display in front of them, or you're running multiple displays, like I said, uh, throughout that lecture hall, et cetera, or you're just projecting images, and that's okay. Not every screen needs to be a touch device. Regardless, what we know 
is engaging that student K through 12 in higher ed, it comes down to information being disseminated on displays. They relate better. They engage better when they see the information on displays and you create that immersive environment. Number two, gaming. You know, if you would have talked to me about gaming mm, probably a year and a half, two years ago, I would have told you, no way. Keep gaming out of schools. I have enough issues with my child in gaming at home. Why would you ever utilize gaming in schools? But here's the truth. When students engage in video games, they experience the world in a new way. They learn to work collaboratively and solve problems through higher complex mental challenges that the games provide. They also develop uh, resource skills that transfer into future learning opportunities. So I did think that this was a pretty interesting stat that we opened this slide deck with. K through 12 students games raised the average test scores to a 91.5 with digital games versus 79.1% without. So while gaming is a great leisure activity that people of all ages can enjoy, why not make it part of learning and the educational experience? Some games have really been found to improve cognitive functions. I know I'm playing some just to enhance my memory and reasoning. I want to take this to another level too. What's interesting is when children are playing games in that K through 12 arena, they're, they're, they see school as it's, it's more fun, right? It's more interactive for them. The goal is to win at the end of the game. But they also start to develop uh, an interest uh, in the gaming, not just winning the game, but the creativity of the game as well. So we're starting to see if we were to look at uh, universities, uh, different curriculums that they're offering, we're seeing more around virtual reality. We're seeing more around um, processing data. We're seeing more around coding. Um, it's funny, I have a 13 year old and he's doing e-learning right now, right, with everything going on. And I have to tell you, I'm creeping on his computer quite a bit, checking it out. Some of his classes are around coding. How cool is that? When did we start doing coding in school? But that's what the future is, right? That's, that's, the jobs that are going to be available to, again, the leaders of tomorrow. When they're engaging in video games, it becomes more about how do I design those graphics? Again, how do I write that coding? How do I design these video games? How do I market these video games? And there are so many games out there that, uh, you know, have been approved in education. For those of you that may not be aware, um, Minecraft education is now available. And I'm sure many of you have heard, if you're not currently not utilizing uh, Kahoot's and Quizits. Video conferencing, another technology we would have never thought would be in the classroom for engaging our students. But it's here, and here's the reasons why. When you utilize video conferencing, it allows you to record the lessons for review. And how many times have you, again, as a professional, um, perhaps been in a meeting and uh, have to replay your meeting notes, you recorded some areas, uh, just to kind of learn more the second time around, right, to grasp everything that was lectured to you? Well, it's no different with video conferencing in the classroom. But here's what's really cool. If you have video conferencing in the classroom, it also allows you to ch chat with the experts face to face. And we're seeing more and more classrooms engage in experts out there in the industry, uh, regardless of what grade they're in. Again, K through 12 and even higher education. Think of out of class learning, how much easier it becomes. And how about this, those parent teacher conferences. All right, I travel a lot with my job and I try to be home as much as I can to make those parent teacher conferences but that's not always the case. Can't always do it. I'm sorry. Guess what? With video conferencing, I can be more engaged, not just with the teacher, but with my son as well. 
As a matter of fact, it was uh, last year that the school district I'm in decided to launch video conferencing and they had a big event and the students were presenting and they allowed the parents to actually join in via video conferencing to watch the children present and truly be part of it versus bringing all the students in the classroom or bringing all the parents in the classroom at once. Experience a virtual trip. You can go anywhere, right? You can go anywhere on the internet. But think of even connecting with another university. Think of connecting with another classroom. Think of connecting, uh, say you are in health class and you are learning about, um, I don't know, the operating room. You're learning about, uh, you know, what it's like to work in the hospital or you're learning about what, what labs do. And maybe you have a contact where you can connect with them and do video conferencing and they can show some of their day-to-day -day activities. And certainly, distant learning is no longer a problem. But consider this when it comes to higher ed. Not all universities have campus buildings in one place. So they are dispersed throughout the city, sometimes dispersed throughout other states. Video conferencing certainly makes it much easier to facilitate the students connecting with the teachers. Another key area of engaging those students is digital signage. It's funny, when you use the term digital signage, a lot of people tend to think of menu boards. Or they think of, okay, I know what digital signage is. I was in the airport not too long ago, uh, and I remember seeing flights and what was delayed, what was flying in, what was flying out. But digital signage in the education market is on a rise. As a matter of fact, the growth for digital signage in education is 60% growth year over year. Again, it's about immersive technology. Think of uh, providing easy access. Real-time information is one of the best ways to capture students. And digital signage is also a great technology for emergency messaging as well. So keeping your students and keeping your faculty safe. Content is always changing on digital signage. It's a great way to bring that school culture to life. Here's a couple examples of uh, some digital signage that can be found uh, in different school districts. Um, we have this, we call it an infographic, and this can actually, uh, it's, on our, it's loca located on our website with our white papers. We'll make sure that you guys have access to this as well. But, um, it, you know, when I, when I go around campuses, when I go around schools in general, and someone's asking me about digital signage, where can you place these? And I say, where is there a wall? Where is there a ceiling? Because any and everywhere, right? Uh, there's digital signage, again, utilized for emergency messaging. Think of in the cafeteria. Well, everyone's worrying about, you know, what's for lunch and how many calories and does it have peanuts in it, et cetera, and how quickly can we change that menu board? Well, digital signage allows you to change the messaging immediately. Think of wayfinding around on campus. Again, not just for the students how to get from one class to another, but how do those newly recruited students feel comfortable in that new town? Campuses are pretty big. I mean, after all, they've moved away from home and they're living here on campus. Where's the closest pizza shop? Where's the closest bowling alley? Or getting them engaged with different um, local sports activities, et cetera. You can also use digital signage throughout libraries. Guidance counselors, again, those job boards are great. Common areas, video walls in the student lounges. Again, if we were to downsize this and look at elementary schools, emergency messaging. Everything you have done to protect your students and to keep them safe, and with all the drills that we're having nowadays, is the information being disseminated on a screen, or are we waiting to receive it in an email? Think about that. Digital signage installations are growing 40% year over year. It's all about that digital transformation. Here's an interesting statistic for you. Digital signage captures 400 more views than a static display. How many times have you walked by a message that perhaps was printed up and hung on a board 
and you looked at it and you just kept walking. Now, when you see motion, when you see color on a screen, you tend to stop and it captures your attention at least for six seconds. So it's no wonder that there's a 400% uh, increase in views. 20% of the people will read the text on a page, but only 80% of the people will watch a video. I'm gonna take this a step further for a second, and I'm gonna talk about funding when it comes to digital signage and that whole digital transformation there in your schools. Keep in mind that there are a lot of green technology grants that are available. There are also a lot of safety grants, safety for education grants that are available as well. And displays for signage fall under both of those categories. Now, when we think of interacting with our students and we think of displays, a lot of times what comes top of mind is what are the students doing when they're home or what are they doing on their phones in the cafeteria? And it seems to go back quite often to social media. Yep, there's a lot going on around social media, from the YouTubes to the Twitters to, um, again, in higher ed, uh, you're starting to see these soon-to-be graduate students on LinkedIn. You see everyone on Facebook, right? In using social, social media, you're able to teach the student to have a positive attitude towards that technology. It enables you to teach them how to use social media, in many cases, how to protect them with social media as well and to stay safe online. Educating young people and how to use these platforms um, on the internet is, is, is key in preventing children from misusing them. And we all know what kind of trouble we can get into if we misuse our social media. What's really interesting is 96% of the students with internet access report using social media technologies. And 75% of those 96% said they were part of different chat groups discussing school, what happened in school, homework assignments, or getting together to really talk about preparing for a test, et cetera. You can also facilitate online learning with YouTube, with different search engines, um, different areas of social media, whether it's Facebook, et cetera. So what I like to say is if you can't beat them, join them. Now here are some of the stats that we just covered. 96% of the students with internet access, 75% of 7th through 12th graders have at least one social media profile. 59% were using social media to talk education topics. And 50% of those who talk about education topics talk specifically about schoolwork. Here's another slide with our SHARP lineup. And what I'm gonna say about this is, as you look and you consider displays throughout your facility, keep in mind one display does not fit all applications. Again, you may have um, in some grades touch screens, in some grades you don't need touch screens. For some areas of digital signage, you may want a, um, a smaller screen size, a 32-inch screen. You may want a 40-inch screen. In other areas, you may want an 80-inch screen. Resolution is also key as well. And I just learned this fact actually this week. So we're talking a lot about 4K. Everyone here is about 4K out there in the industry. I was talking to one of Sharp's end users and I said, uh, to my dear friend Adam, I said, hey, so did you know that we have 8K as well? And he said, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that, Sandra, because we do a lot around video conferencing, distant learning, as well as um, with sign language, and we need to utilize 8K displays. So we're thinking about moving from 4K to 8K. And I said, Oh my gosh, Adam, I never even thought about that. He said, yeah, 4K is great and I love it, but the detail that we need is actually 8K when it comes to the sign language. And I was like, geez. He said, you know, especially with what we're doing too with some of the learning in the medical industry. Now, these are not medically graded devices, but if you are in the education sector, think about it. Um, you're teaching uh, 
cardiac thoracic, you're teaching uh, anatomy, whatever it may be, think of the detail that you would see on an AK display. So there's lots of things to consider when you're looking at a manufacturer. It can be very difficult to standardize on a specific display. However, here's my sharp pitch. When you're working with a manufacturer like Sharp, you don't need to worry about standardizing on a single display because we carry 4K, we carry 8K, we carry desktops, touch, non-touch displays from 32 all the way up to 80, 85 inch displays. So it's something that you're gonna to wanna to keep top of mind. Of course, keeping this all of top of mind means that there's budgets attached to everything as well. Now, I'm certainly not an expert with um, budgeting and education, so I apologize. The next couple of slides are going to be very data heavy. Uh, this was done on purpose, so you can again download this slide deck and utilize these slides as a reference. When it comes to funding, technology and education, it's so important. It's important enough that the government has been increasing funding for tech spending in schools rather than uh, you know, other um, programs, adjusting it to other programs. So really, school funding has been top of mind. As a matter of fact, the federal E-rate e program provides discounts to schools, libraries, investments in telecommunications, and related services, including internet access. Because they understand you can have all these devices in place but you need to be able to support them. You can have these five key areas of engaging students from displays in the classroom to their um, devices that are in their hands, to digital signage, to video conferencing, to even social media. But if you don't have the infrastructure on the back end, well, how are these devices working? So there's lots of programs out there with discounts that range from 20 to 90%. But I think what I'm most excited about, as, as I was personally learning about this, I saw that there was a huge increase in grants and funding that is available. So again, the numbers tell the story. The program is administered by the Universal Service Administrative Company under the direction of the FCC. And I'm not making this up. As a matter of fact, I have provided at the end of the slide deck links for you to do your own research as well. But what it comes down to is everybody understands the education, the needs that are out there surrounding technology. And the smart classroom is all these devices engaging the children, again, the leaders of tomorrow, and it's truly preparing them for corporate America. So please look under those re resources that are provided to you and look at additional grants and funding that you may be eligible for that you don't necessarily know you are, from that green technology to, again, emergency messaging to even these um, green devices within the classroom, because there's a lot of funding that is available. And when it comes down to funding, you always want to sit there and say, okay, how are we spending this money? CapEx versus OpEx. Some understand the difference, some don't. When you look at technology, a lot of it can be bundled as a service. So when you start to look at uh, the differences there, think about it as um, a capital expense, as you guys know, is a one-time large purchase, right? However, if you look at what the potential is to offer more of a monthly reoccurring charge, so technology as a service, classroom as a service, manage network services that tie all this together, it becomes more of an operational expense versus that one time, again, capital expense. There are so many questions around how do we get these systems up and running? And what we do know is the schools and the classrooms have truly become IoT centric, Internet of Things. Everything is connecting. And again, if you don't have that infrastructure on the back end to support it, how do you access social media? How do you access video conferencing? What about your digital signage? Can your students truly connect from their device to those interactive boards? 
So I have included here in the slide deck uh, just, again, a reference guide that will help you all when looking over your network to make sure that you have enough um, bandwidth in your infrastructure for connecting devices, et cetera. Again, this is just a reference slide for you. Uh, so hopefully you'll utilize this, but you certainly do have access to all of us at SHARP, um, as well as our experts that are out there in the field. Uh, we work very closely with many of your resellers as well. But this is really what you're going to want to think about, is do you have the infrastructure on the back end to support those classroom needs? So just to recap real quick, we've identified to engage the students we need to make it a immersive environment. We need to get them interested in what's on the displays in front of them to capture their attention. And we can do that through their devices that they have in their hand, whether it's their mobile devices or perhaps for using some of our, our DynaBook tablets that we offer at Sharp. We've also identified that there's a huge array of opportunity for displays in the classroom. Of course, there's other hardware technology that can go in the classroom as well. But think about it, all that technology and hardware truly connects and disseminates the information to the students on the boards in front of them. And we know sometimes you want to look at interactive boards. Sometimes we're looking at specialty boards like that Windows collaboration display, which is perfect for higher ed. And we also have identified that sometimes in the classroom environment, you don't need to have an interactive board. You can have a large format monitor because you're mirroring information from your DynaBook tablet in front of you to the display that's in front of you. We've also identified that video conferencing. Where many schools are still on the fence about deploying video conferencing, we know right here, right now, especially because what we've been going through the last month and a half, that video conferencing, I would say it's almost critical. It's important for the students to be able to still connect with the teachers, with the lecturers, with the professors, even when they're not there on site. Just like it's very important for the parents to be able to connect as well. And we've also identified that social media and gaming, where some of us are on the fence with that as well. I know, like I said, I certainly was. There's a lot of great benefits. It makes learning fun. As long as it's fun, it's engaging to the students. It makes them want to learn more, more than just the game, but understanding how the game is developed. It, it really pulls a lot of drive out of their minds and creativity, et cetera. So those are the five key areas that we wanted to call out in this um, PowerPoint presentation today. There are certainly so many other ways to engage those students, uh, your students. Again, making them part of the lectures is huge, uh, regardless of the grade level. But we wanted to call out these five key areas that we feel are very important. With everything that we covered today, we do have case studies and white papers as well. Uh, you'll see more and more webinars with um, expert uh, panels, uh, end users as well, discussing what, how they've launched technology and education while utilizing our product, et cetera. So please, if you're not already connected with us on LinkedIn and following us, we would love to have you uh, follow us. Also, join our website. Uh, you can sign up for any type of bulletins that we'll have going out via email, et cetera. But we want to partner with you. It's important for us not only to partner with our resellers that are supporting you, but also to get engaged with the end user as well. We want to connect with you. We want to hear that we're doing things right. We want to make sure that our product is fitting in your environment. And most importantly, if there are tweaks that we need to make to our product, again, taking that voice of the customer back to our factories is very important to us. So with that said, um, I'm happy to take questions from the audience in just a second. Once you receive the slide deck, the last three slides include where you can find additional grants and that funding that's available. It's under additional resources, and I'm sure many of you are very interested in that slide. And then we have our sharp articles, again, many white papers and case studies for our displays in uh, the education vertical in many different applications. So not just in the classroom, outside the classroom, uh, wayfinding applications, digital menu boards, emergency messaging, et cetera. And I included two slides on different case studies. 
So I know that was a lot of information. I cannot thank you enough for taking the time to listen uh, to all of it. And with that said, Chris, I'm going to turn this over to you because we are now 40 minutes in with this fabulous audience, and I'd love to hear their questions. Thank you, Sandra. Um, looks like we have about 15 minutes or so to get to some questions. As a reminder, if you have a question for the speaker, please use the Q&A box. All right, let's look here. First question, can you highlight the biggest advantage in working with Sharp? <clears throat> so definitely the biggest advantage in working with, with Sharp is, well, I, I won't, don't want to say definitely, I want to say there's actually a couple of them. Uh, one is our robust lineup that we have, um, is especially when it comes to the education vertical market, there are so many different areas of displays that are needed. Like I said, in the classroom, outside the classroom, around campuses, uh, within dorms, et cetera. And being able to offer touch displays as well as non-touch, uh, desktops, we now offer desktops. Um, we have a partnership uh, where we own Dynabook. So having devices such as Dynabook, it gives you a full array of devices that can be deployed uh, within your facility. Number two would be leveraging our expertise. So you work with uh, your reseller that has sold you the product, that is helping uh, integrate the product, et cetera. They have access as well as, as well as you have access to working with our engineering team and our subject matter experts. If you just need to do a double check and make sure that the solutions that you're looking to deploy uh, make sense, um, if you're looking for you know, some feedback on best practice, practices, uh, we're available here to work with your reseller and connecting with you as well. So we're really an extension of their sales force. Okay, here, um, another one. How do we know which display is best to meet our needs? So that comes down to connecting with your reseller and us really talking about the environment. We don't expect necessarily you as the end user to know. That's what we know on our end as a manufacturer. So we'll work with your reseller to identify the size of the classroom, how close people are to the display, what the application is, the brightness that's needed. And we can certainly recommend to you a good, better, and best to fit your budget. And again, working with that reseller uh, for guidance. Um, can you explain grants for emergency messaging? So there are a lot of grants that are available, and I apologize, I don't have all the details on it. What I can tell you is, and I've been in the digital signage industry for over 15 years, um, each district is going to be different when it comes to eligibility and how they are deploying uh, digital signage for emergency messaging. So the first thing you would do is go to your district office and look under, there's two different areas uh, for digital signage, one green technology and two uh, school safety or emergency messaging. Uh, then what you would do is we can provide you with the language to actually type in when you're requesting that grant and how it'll be utilized. But basically, you want to think of the digital signage, those emergency messaging, uh, it comes up immediately on your screen that's dispatched through the district office, or even in some cases like weather alerts, uh, emergency messaging through 911 centers. We work with many, many different content providers to help put together that full solution. So it's not that you're buying a sharp device out of a box where it's an all-in-one solution, but we can help uh, put together the solution for you as well as help with um, applying for that grant. And like I said, uh, we already have the language in place to help you type that out when requesting that grant info, but it does vary state by state. Okay, how do we get access to additional webinars slash learning tools for deployment? So, web, okay, let's take this in two parts. So, many of your resellers, um, again, will have access to our webinar calendars, but a great way to keep up to date with that is to connect with us on LinkedIn, or whether it's uh, Sharp that you're connecting with, um, Sharp Business, Sharp Electronics, uh, or even myself, connecting with myself or your main points of contacts from Sharp. We always post it 
uh, on social media from LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, I know Sharp is on all three of those social media um, avenues. You will also have access to our tools by going to our website at sharpusa.com. From there, you can scroll over to business products, or I'm sorry, it's commercial products, and it'll have a full lineup of our commercial products from our displays to even our MFP, which is huge too. And I apologize, I didn't talk about that much uh, within this slide deck, but also consider Sharp for your copier needs, right? Because think about it, how many copiers do you have deployed throughout your schools? And now if you can take the display and have the information on the display be copied out, again, a perfect solution. But we do have those white papers, case studies, and again, additional tools located on that sharpusa.com website. Okay. Um, you mentioned several brands such as software providers for educational platforms. Where can I find those um, and additional suggestions? So we have a great program known as the SHARP STAR program. And our STAR program is uh, many different um, partners, if you will, from controllers to installation companies to software companies, et cetera. And we stand very close with these partners here that are also through our resellers that you're currently working with when you purchase product. So we can certainly recommend um, software, uh, additional hardware um, resources to your reseller and make sure that they have access to that STAR partner program. So it's the SHARP STAR partner program. Uh, these partners, we've tested their product, they've tested our product. A lot of times we showcase them throughout our shows throughout the year uh, to kind of show that joint unity. So your partners that you're per currently purchasing your hardware from do have access to the Sharp Star Partners. I know that's a mouthful, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> um, how can we demo your product to ensure it fits our needs? And there are also sort of two parts of that. Um, how can we qualify for E-rate funding? Okay, so let's go back to the demo. Um, Sharp does have an awesome demo program. So again, what you want to do is you want to connect with your Sharp reseller. Uh, if you are not sure if you've never purchased Sharp product in the past, I mean, we are sold through over 3,600 resellers across the U.S. So chances are whoever you have bought a screen from before or a laptop or any type of like hardware device, they're very familiar with the Sharp brand. Uh, we will connect with them. Uh, and make sure that they are assisting us in getting a demo unit out to you. So the first thing we would do is identify, you know, with that partner, because we do not sell direct, we sell through our partners uh, that are currently selling you hardware. We would connect with them, again, qualify what it is that you're looking for, what type of screen, and then from there we would make sure that we ship a demo unit out to you, which is always a great thing to do, especially in this world of IoT. Pilot the product to make sure that it works best within your environment. And then uh, after a few days you've had the opportunity to test it, we do cover the cost to have it shipped back as well. But it would come down to connecting with us, letting us know who your partner is, or reaching out to your partner so we can streamline everything again as an extension of their sales team and make sure a demo unit is sent to you. The second question okay. was on the e-funding. Erica, are you on the line by chance? I am and I actually just texted you. <laughs> um, oh. can, you can you hear me? Can you hear me through this? Yes. Okay, fabulous. So we actually can do some direct business as well with our government and major account managers for schools. I just wanted to address that first question. Just, okay, sorry about just, that, yep. No, no, that's all right. So we do actually have a sales team dedicated directly for uh, schools and can, can help with that, that our government and major account managers would also be your best stop for any type of E-rate answers. I don't have specifics, but that's something that we could speak to um, individually if somebody had that question. And they could absolutely either reach out to you or reach out to me and we could talk about that further offline. Perfect. I'm so glad that you're online. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's about it. 
Um, if you had any more comments, Sandra, that you would like to mention before I wrap up? You know, I don't have anything else um, really at this time, but, uh, you know, these are an hour long webinars and we've asked you to take an hour out of your busy day to join us, to listen to us. Uh, we want to make sure that we're offering you the right talk tracks, that these are important to you, that we're connecting with you. So the first thing we want to do is say thank you so much for taking that time uh, to join us today. But second of all, if there are specific topics uh, that you think would be very valuable that we could help um, work with you on or, or teach out there in the industry, um, if there are specific areas that you have questions and want to utilize us, again, just to kind of toss around some ideas and some thoughts of things that you're looking to uh, deploy within your school, your classroom, your district, uh, your university, you know, we're, we're here. We, it's for us, we want to make sure that we're selling the right product to the right customer at the right time. But we take the approach that if it's not us at that time, really, that's okay. We're, we're here to help and to truly partner with you as well because there's always a fit somewhere down the line for Sharp. Um, but until we get there, let, let's partner together. Let's get to know each other. Uh, let's continue to work uh, as partners in the industry. So that's all that I have, Chris. Uh, again, thank you, everybody, for joining. And this will be provided. Is that correct, Chris? There will be an uploaded link, I believe. Correct. Um, a couple things. Um, if you submitted a question and we didn't get to it, um, we will have those and Sharp will follow up with you directly. Um, also want to thank Sandra today for a very informative presentation. Um, I want to thank the audience members as well um, for joining us and sticking with us for an hour. It was a great presentation. Um, as a reminder, you'll get an email within the next few days that will contain a link to the recording um, along with a PDF of all the slides and those links um, at the end of the presentation that Sandra spoke of, they will be active and you'll be able to click on those and download um, the case studies and other items. Um, without further ado, thanks for participating and uh, have a great day. Thanks so much.